जननी शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगदुरु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु श्री राम कृष्ण ट्राइंग टू यूनाइट दि वर्ल्ड रिमूविंग ऑल डेब्रीज दैट हैव अक्यूमुलेटेड इन ईच पाथ टू गॉड ब्रिंगिंग द एसेंस टू सरफेस एंड डिजॉल्विंग ऑल द डिफरेंसेस ही वांट्स ऑल चिल्ड्रन of his on the earth as human beings should unite and live in peace with mutual love and in perfect harmony inner harmony outer harmony with all others in community and harmony with the nature and harmony with the divine the beyond so Sri Ram Krishna is trying to dissolve all differences, remove all defects and imperfections, and unwanted accumulations. Just like we keep on cleaning the house every day, from somewhere some dust gets accumulated. From where the air is bringing, wind is bringing. we move about and bring the dust with him and next day same amount of dust is there to be removed and cleaned so it gets accumulated is has to be clean it becomes a part of the whole how it becomes part we do not know we wear the clothes and go move about and come the clothes have become dirty already the dirt is trying to become one with the cloth again we wash keep it neat and clean again we wear and go by the evening we come back the dirt if we don't wash it it doesn't retain its purity its purpose is defeated like that in religion in path to god in faiths various faiths all this we see some unwanted things get accumulated one by one because small taste differences understanding differences create to bring something inside you see the loss of government each time there is an amendment each time there is an amendment every year you see the um, law book is enhancing expanding in so many ways they feel the necessity which the earlier section earlier people did not feel to make them understand to give them a clarity over the law the extent but it is unnecessary because the next generation is again changing another one amendment yeah another amendment canceling the earlier amendment. all this happen but the law remains the same if we remove the man's nature and his own attitudes as it changes we bring certain things in religion that they are, the most of them are non essentials non essentials we bring to give importance for the essentials and store in non essentials because it is at physical level they take prominence like rituals worship this and that the purpose slowly gets weighed off it's out of our sight we stick on to the physical level of religion so somebody has to come and give the significance of it the purpose of it remove all the accumulated dirt and make it pure again polish it again and keep it cool 
So this part for universal love, universal one existence of humanity with love, peace and harmony, Sri Ramakrishna is trying to bring up and the maximum thing that is needed is existential aspect of man. Existence. All others keep on changing. You see the world before a few decades is no more now. These are constantly changing. But eternal principle governing the constantly changing society remains as it is. Eternal values for a changing society remains as it is. Society changes, but values, principles, ideals remain same without changing. So Sri Ramakrishna is trying to bring your attention, take your attention to these things, eternal principles, eternal values, eternal ideals. These to eternity is trying to take and the changes in the human, human nature, times, everything, he is leaving it to itself. That will take care of itself. They will, how to accommodate the eternal principles in our day-to-day -day life is most important part of our human existence. Hmm. Brahman alone is addressed as mother. This is because mother is an object of great love. Wherever there is love, we don't see defects. If we see defects, our love shrinks back. We recoil from things where we see defect. The defect may be genuine or ingenuine. It doesn't matter. The moment I see defect. I don't want to go there. I want to keep myself away from that. Not that I am right and that is wrong, but I find it not the way in which I am thinking, I am seeing, I am viewing, I am living. So I take that as defect. From my type of life, it's a defect. The, in their type of life, it may be a virtue, I don't know. But I see it as a defect, I recoil. So, this recoiling, uh, when there is great, oh, everyone loves one object, uh, to which every love is given, support is given, safety is given, security is given, and Care is given, concern is given, and its welfare is constantly sought by only one person who is the mother of the child. So mother takes greatest position and when the child looks at the mother, it is it find total security, total confidence and fearlessness, fearlessness. It, what, where will I get my food? It doesn't think also. A child doesn't think where from the mother is going to bring my food. It wants food. He knows nobody else can give me. Mother gives. Whatever all my desires are food before my mother. So mother is an object of great love. And when everything what I seek or need is given, where else should I go? What far should I go? There is some kind of dust somewhere in everyone else. So, mother is object of great love, great love. So, because mother is an object of great love, one is able to realize God just through this love. A child, how it loves, innocently, totally depending on mother. However great another person may be there, wealthy may be there, he may show greater love. 
but child doesn't go. It goes to its mother only. Anything happens, it runs to his mother. Hmm. You can see in Indian land, we commonly see in streets, the birds coming and sitting on animals. But never it sits on humans. The human comes but it runs away. On all animals, hmm, buffaloes and cows, and all the crows, cranes, they freely sit on their back and go on searching for small small insects on the body and goes on to and come also relations. These also find a mutual friendship as if but they cannot develop it with humans you see. Hmm. Hum the Cow is not able to give anything. They have to search and take. And man is able to give. If he takes some food or insects in hand and tries to give it, give to a bird, it will run away. Though he is capable of giving, he is capable of personally loving, which cow doesn't do, the bird doesn't come to him. Because it has no confidence there. It has no love there. Mm. And it is all love and consideration where there is no danger. It doesn't have any danger by going to a cow. So it goes there and not comes to knowing that man is greater power, greater capacity, yet it doesn't go like a child doesn't go to anyone except mother. So like that, this person hmm, got same love, same confidence, same dependence, same seeking of fearlessness and security if he turns to God. One can realize God through, just to through, just through, nothing else is needed. Uh, I do so much of japa, I do everyday puja, I do chanting of Durga Saptashiti, so many things I am doing, nothing will, but just, just that love, the love of a child to its mother. You can realize God, the ecstasy of feelings, we saw yesterday, ecstasy of feelings, devotion, love and faith. Mm. These are the means. Listen to a song. As is man's meditation, so is his feeling of love. As is the feeling of love, so is his gain. And faith is the root of all. If the if in the nectar of lake of Mother Kali's feet, my mind remain immersed of little use or worship oblations or sacrifice. As is man's meditation, so is his feeling of love. Anything you constantly contemplate upon, seeing it in various aspects as something good and great. Now, something which is you consider as an object of hatred or something, we contemplate, meditate on our enemies also. Somebody constantly troubling me, they, we make them a part of our awareness and go on cogitating on them. But it doesn't generate love for them anytime. And I may sit and meditate on them, my hatred, this is dislike increases. Love doesn't come into picture because I am not taking it as a higher reality. I don't take that to be an eternal thing. I don't think of that as the supreme thing in the world. But when I think of God, when I think of God as mother, then 
the the supreme and the safe the love the ocean of love bliss peace absolute is being perceived in that object when these are perceived the soul starts loving it because what mother is giving me in and through this world living in this world what mother can give me is being given by god at a larger scale for lives of lives and beyond if i can i love mother for all the services she does for all the help she gives for the all afflictions struggle she undergoes and constant care concern and all that with which she is bringing me up for the totally it's great sacrifice she is sacrificing her life for me this makes me love i mean each soul is aspiring for bliss peace and freedom this i have from mother alone wherever else i go i don't get that bliss that peace and that freedom that i get only from mother like that it is god from at eternal level at beyond life here in life i am getting this and as i grow as i become independent i am separating from mother i am moving towards the world and worldly positions worldly enjoyments to the extent i am separating from her but when i love god i am entering into eternity i am moving towards god forever here as i grow i move away from god mother physical mother at grass level in case of god i am moving towards god more and more intimacy more and more. i am entering into more and more reality i am entering into more and more eternity hmm so when i meditate on it my love love is what flow of my heart flow of my atman i am flowing into it because what i want He is totally available into it. I am flowing. Only thing I want is bliss, peace, love, and freedom. And that is there in abundance. In it is a ocean of love, peace, bliss, absolute. It is a ocean, and I flow into that ocean. This flow is gone now. as i meditated more and more of god i am less and less body the more i hold on to the world with raga dvesha i will be more this body i want to become less this body so here we find there is a great difference between as is my meditation i go to go on contemplating with ananta kalyana guna paripurna devata god who is free from entire universe who controls the entire universe and all beings on him i am contemplating and that gives me generates love for me the has love flows as i may is my meditation so is my love the more i meditate on him more love flows i want to protect i want to possess i want to be with it i want to protect it also i don't want god to go away at all i want god to be like that ha uh, a kind of motherhood also comes towards god a kind of surrender the dasya bhav also comes sakya bhav also comes Mother of all, also come. He is my surface for into which I want to dissolve away. 
I want to these various bhavas modes I am going to experience. So this here we see as is my meditation, so is the his feeling of love. As is man's feeling of love, so is his gain. Uh, attainment. Each flow of love endures, endures, endures. We become closer and closer, 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 inseparably closer, and through eternity. So is his gain, and the faith is yeah, the root of all. Because why do we call it faith? I understand what is God through scriptures. I understand from those people who have experienced it. And I go on hearing, I go to Bhagavata or Ramakrishna, the great master, or life in of Sri Ramakrishna. I go on studying and reading and understanding it. Uh, and the gain and I have not seen unseen object beyond my understanding limitation. I am limited he is unlimited finite and infinite finite cannot measure the infinite understand the infinite and I have not seen experienced I have Heard from scriptures and realize souls that so and so exists. And I started what I seek in and through many, many lives is here in abundance so I can become one with it. So these are all unseen things I am accepting. And acceptance and so I have to struggle. I have to give up all other things and dedicate myself to it. And what 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 a guarantee is there that it is so? What is the truth? If I reason out, I may fail. And what supports is the faith. Faith in the Guru's words, faith in the words of scriptures. Faith in the words of the enlightened ones that yes, God exists and He can be seen. So I can be experienced. You can possess it, you can have it, you can reach it, you can dissolve in it. So this understanding, this acceptance, this dedication, this total surrender happens with the faith. Yes, faith in the words of scriptures, we have words of the enlightened ones. And the realized souls, their life explaining the truth. I faith. Faith is a faculty which is supporting the by which we support through reasoning, through mind, our previous experiences, and through heart. These three are supporting the faith. Mm. Root of all, all my meditation, God is so and so. The Vedas say like this, uh, Bhagavad Gita says like this. All this, I am the Lord of this universe. I create all the jivas. All this we see in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna telling, Thakur telling so many things. We listen and the faith makes me struggle, realize God. I want to realize God. Realization is true or not, I do not know. And it is faith. Faith in me, faith in God. And faith is the root of all. If in the nectar lake of Mother's Kali's feet, my mind remains immersed, of lately use our worship, oblations and sacrifice. If in the nectar of nectar lake of Mother Kali's feet, hmm, nectar, nectar is 
a thing that gives you total satisfaction, total nourishment, and total fulfillment, paripurnata, and make you immortal. We call nectar amrita in Sanskrit amrita, which is beyond death, which takes you beyond it. Amrita, there is no no more death. That which gives tribus the sense of the act of death, transmigration. Uh, so nectar is the thing which nourishes my existence, be it with body or without body. I it nourishes and it takes me to immortality. It makes me give me total fulfillment. From bodily nourishment, anything what we call nectar. Nectar means it is it has to remove all kind of dirt in me. Bodily dirt for food and hunger, cloth and other needs of the body, mind, peace and tranquility. Body and mind need nourishment also. The nourishment also it gives nectar and makes me get the last identity of immortality. I am immortal and give me total fulfillment by which I don't need to come to this world or enjoy or possess anything in this world. So that aspect of nectar that is complete fulfillment, total fulfillment, paripurnata. Paripurnata comes only by realizing God. So that is nectar. Mother's feet, he compares to nectar. It gives everything what I need and more. Yeah, I enter into life eternal. And so I become immortal. I will be with Mother at mother's feet for all the times to come and beyond time. The, in the nectar of plate of mother's Kali's feet, if my mind remains immersed, then of little use are worship, oblations, and sacrifice. Uh, worship, worship is where. We give something to God out of love. We offer, we serve. Main philosophical or the spiritual aspect of worship is I offer my senses. Like in Japa, I offer my mind. In meditation, I offer my intellect. In service, I offer my body. Like that in worship, I offer my senses. And Worship is where out of love I give something to God, serve Him in various ways to please Him. And this is worship. Uh, now when I got, when I am immersed in the feet now, what for is the worship I am doing is to please God, Mother. And Mother is ever pleased with me when she has given a place at the feet of her. Oblations, what is offered in fire uh, with an intention that fire God will take it and give to the particular devata. <coughs> to whom I have to offer at her feet, I am there. <coughs> or sacrifice. Sacrifice, any type of sacrifice is called yajna, giving anything to devata in any form. And here, especially when it comes to shakta tradition, shakti worship, the animal sacrifice is also there. It's a symbolic sacrifice of our own animalhood in us animal sacrifice and also 
if the meditating is inevitable, then offer it to Mother. Let the soul whom you are releasing from that body, let it have a divine birth. See, whatever is the awareness in which a person dies, that will be his end. So we see the awareness decides our next goal. Where are we? What we are going to be? Our awareness. How when we sacrifice an animal, if we bring it to a awareness, even a child understands, newborn child, where it is, what is it seeing? Animals also have that sense which we may miss. That whole atmosphere charged with the mother's presence affects it. In whatever atmosphere we keep, a thing living being, it responds to its atmosphere. We have invoked mother and we have to, we kill millions of animals for our food. One such offering you do to mother so that the soul you have, you are going to kill uh, in the butcher's shop. Why don't you do it in mother's uh, field and release that soul also for his future development and eat that meat as prasada. Usually you are supposed to give to poor people who wants and who cannot eat. Anyway, this sacrifice, it is done to please mother that and get benefit of the be taking food in the name of mother and distributing to others as prasad. So this, when you are at the feet of mother itself, what need is there of all this? Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu